Hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Worthy is the Lamb of God who was slain before the foundation of the world. He is the living word, the fountain of life. It's everything we need and more. We honor his presence today. He is the good shepherd, the bishop of our souls, the living word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. All right, let's go ahead and get started today. Thank you, Lord God. We bless you. We bless you. Thank you, Lord God. We honor your presence, God. We give you glory. Thank you, Father, for your goodness and mercy bestowed upon us. Hallelujah. Gracious God, our Father, Lord, I come before your presence to tell you thank you, Lord God, for the day that you have created. I thank you, Lord God, that you are the living word, oh God, and the man shall not live by bread alone, but every word proceeds out of the mouth of God. Father, I honor your presence today, oh God, for the peace you have given us, oh God, that surpass all understanding, how you kept us throughout the day, oh God, through our trials and tribulations and our tests, oh God. And we lift up the name of Jesus, God. We thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit working in our lives, oh God, to will and do according to your good pleasure. Father, have your way in us today, oh God, as we walk by faith and not by sight. We ask, oh God, that you use us for your glory, God. Tonight, Father, you intervene as we begin to study your word. Let the word of Christ dwell us tonight, oh God, with power and authority to, Father God, lift up, Father God, those who are bowed down this, in their hearts, who are broken and torn, that you give them wisdom, give them insight, give them understanding, God. That you let the words of Christ, Father, manifest in their hearts as you would be glorified. I thank you, Lord God, that this is the day the Lord has made. We can rejoice and be glad in it. And we honor you, Lord God, for being merciful and mighty, God, being the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are, Father, everything we need, O oh God, and more. And we glorify you, God. We ask, O oh God, let healing flow this evening, God, in the hearts of those who need healing, God. Let your power, Father, begin to radiate in their bloodstream, the neural system, Father God, the heart conditions, God. Those dealing with rheumatoid arthritis, dealing with cancer, diabetes, Father God, dealing with leukemia and sickle cell, Father God, dealing with all types of illnesses and diseases that you would have your way, God, in their lives right now, God. Let the blood of Jesus purge, heal, and deliver, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God. That's oh God right now that you be my pastor. He's on the road, Father God, today that you cover in the blood of Jesus, Father God, be a shield and buckler. Father God, I thank you for the anniversary of today, oh God, that you let them have a wonderful time with his wife together, God, in the name of Jesus, that you bless them tremendously, God. Let the overflow, God, flow into their hearts today, oh God. Let the overflow of the favor and the blessing of God rain upon them, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, we bind every demonic force, every attack and assault that are trying to come against them, God, to distract, to deter, and to hinder, that you would dispatch angels, Father, right, right now, God, Father, God, to surround them in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, Lord, God, as we prepare to have this class tonight, oh God, speak to our hearts by divine revelation. Let there be insight, revelation, understanding from the heart of God. That was speaking to our lives, oh God, to bring changes from the inside out to make us a better person. Forgive us for our sins, knowing and unknowing, God, the sins of commission and sins, Father God, that we're not mindful of and wash us in the blood of the Lamb. And I thank you for restoration, God, to restore, revive, refresh those who, Father God, who have strayed away from the faith, oh God. But you bring them back into the household of faith that you, Father God, will wash their slate clean. Put them back on straight street to walk in your purpose and divine will for their lives. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. I'm excited tonight. God is so good. I had a chance on Sunday to preach a message to uh, bring a message concerning the requirements to live in the overflow. 
And we have to really want to be filled with the Holy Spirit in order to even receive the anointing. The anointing cannot overflow through your life if you don't want it. But if you are hungry and thirst for righteousness, God promises he will fill you. That's a guarantee we have from the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord God Almighty. Amen. I want to read a couple of devotion before we go into our lesson tonight, oh God. Okay. I want to just forgive me. I'm fumbling my word right now because I'm so excited. <laughs> I got to slow it down. Take it easy. <laughs> Y'all pray for me. I got that fire burning inside. I can't quench it. Can't put it out. And I'm trying to speak, but the enemy trying to distract me. But the joy of the Lord is flooding my heart to speak what God has given me to speak by his spirit. Amen. So our devotion tonight from the book, Jesus Calling, Jesus Calling, says, learn to live from your true center in me. I reside in the deepest depths of your being. In eternal union with your spirit is at this deep level that my peace reigns continually. You will not find lasting peace in the world around you, in circumstances, or in human relationships. The external world is always in flux under the curse of death and decay. But there's a gold mine of peace deep within you waiting to be tapped. Take time to delve into the riches of my residing presence. I want you to live increasingly from your real center where my love has an eternal grip on you. I am Christ in you. The hope of glory. Isn't that wonderful? We got the hope of glory living inside of us. And we have the central connection in our hearts where God's presence abides in us. But we have to want to abide in that presence. We must want to allow God to begin to speak into our lives, to direct our lives, to keep us in his will, stand fast in the faith of Jesus Christ. Is so awesome when you get a revelation of the goodness of God and know that no matter what you go through in this life, your circumstances, the troubles you face, the disappointments and discouraging moments cannot measure up to God's peace. Because he said the peace he gives us surpasses all understanding. And there's a gold mine of peace inside of you. You, you, you ever watch those Western movies where, where the cowboys go searching for gold in the streams and they go in the caves, digging in the, in the cave for gold? And it's a gold mine. And when they tap into the right area of that cave or get into the right area of the stream, they gather a priceless jewel from the waters or from the cave. God gave us a treasure on the inside of us that cannot be taken from you. And you have to know that you are connected to the center core of Jesus Christ. And he dwells in your heart. That is so amazing. So amazing. So when you tap into this peace, doesn't matter what's going on around you. It's not going to get you in discontentment. It's not going to shake you up or make you angry. It's not going to take away your, your, your peace that God giving you. But it's going to you have a calmness in your spirit. To keep standing and trusting in God's provisions, his care, and his loving kindness. That he has provided for you as a child of God. Amen. Amen. I want to read the other one. The other devotion for more of you, God. For more of you, God. And it says, today is a day of moving forward. I'm going to read another one. This, this is the one from yesterday. I can read this too, but this is a good one too. But it says, today is a day of moving forward. Leaving the past behind. 
Father, bombard my enemies right now as he tries to wiggle in his way, his way in my life. Causing horrible situations. Lord, I'm looking to you. I know you are all powerful and almighty. You are a king of kings and Lord of lords and God of gods. You are Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. My situation seemed really big to me, Father. However, Lord, you are greater and bigger than any problem I encounter. So, Father, right now, I hand the situation over to you. I focus on you, Jesus. I'm seeking your face, embracing your power, and thanking you for undeniable goodness. Lord Jesus, I need you. I want you. I win with more of you, God. Ooh, that is so good. That is so good. Hallelujah. We win with more of God in our lives. Oh, my God. That is so amazing to know that we, we win. So I want you to know today you're a winner. You're a winner in Christ Jesus. As the Lord begins to move in your situation, in your life, he, he reminds you of the goodness that he has bestowed upon you. Amen. So the one for today is his father. I'm going to put this on the screen. Hallelujah. It says, Father, I know you are in complete control. Today, no matter what my circumstances look like, you will position and transition me to my perfect destination. <laughs> that is so awesome. I tell you, I praise God on that. I praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Today, no matter what my circumstances look like, you will position and transition me to my perfect destination. I trust you completely, Lord Jesus. Lord, let every step I take be a reflection of you shining in me. Can you say that to yourself today? Lord, let every step I take be a reflection of you shining in me. Let me illuminate so brightly the entire world would know I am a child of the Most High. That is so awesome. Father, this, Father on this journey, guide each and every one of my steps as I crawl, step, and walk. Father, you guide my path with more of you, God. That should be your heart's desire for God to lead and guide you every day, every step, everywhere you go. That his spirit will begin to fill you in such a supernatural way that no matter what you go through, He's walking with you. He's talking with you. He's encouraging you. He's uplifting you. He has a divine destiny for you to fulfill. He has a divine plan in your life to manifest. And all you have to do is just surrender you and release into his will that he can position and transition you in the place he has for your life to be to promote his glory. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. 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 Last week we talked about Ahab seeks. I mean, Jezebel seeks Ahab. But we talked about it. Correct myself. Jezebel seeks Ahab. And one of the points we talked about is how Ahab was able to control his ability to to irritate people and provoke a silent and a passive control. So he act like he wimp. He still had power and authority. But as we discovered, he gave his authority to his wife, which was Jezebel. So Jezebel controlled his life. Not only that, 
we talked about Ahab have the ability to use their Jezebel wives for friends or relationships to do their dirty work. Isn't that something how the enemy knows exactly what to do in your life to provoke you? To get you off track? He knows exactly what to do to influence and to drive you away from your purpose. But it's up to you to make a decision that I'm not going to fall prey to the enemy's tactics no matter which way they come. I'm going to stand on the word because it's the word of God that empowers you and equips you to overcome any obstacle of the enemy that comes to your life. You're victorious. You're an overcomer. You're more than a conqueror. And you're victorious in Christ Jesus. And it's up to you to make a decision. I'm going to walk in God's word. I'm going to abide by the word. I'm going to leave the Holy Spirit to lead God and direct me in the plan and the will and the purpose God has created me. That he will be glorified. Amen. Go a little further. Jezebel was intimidating and in your face person. Have you ever been around people who are so cocky and arrogant, who is always in your face to justify what they do, to try to make you feel bad, make you be, feel little, make you never measure to where they are? I remember during my time of ministry, the young, young days in my ministry, I went with a bishop to visit another church. Because I didn't have a title for myself and that, that measured to their standards. He allowed the bishop to sit up here and I had to sit down in low plane off to the side because I was inadequate. They felt I had no value. People always want to judge you by what they see, but they don't know your heart. They don't know the power inside of you. They don't know the wisdom you have. They don't know the knowledge that you have from God's word. But they want to always define you as a little person in their eyes. Mm -hmm. But I found out something. There always been a giant inside of me. Mm -hmm. And as I learned how to stay humble, even when people overlook me and never recognize me, I knew who I was in Christ Jesus. I can care less what people think, how they felt about me, because I knew that God would validate me himself and show people who I am in him. Amen. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining Cousin Jackie. God bless you. Amen. LaShonda, Pastor Denise, and Deborah, God bless you. Thank you for jo joining in this evening. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I pray this really bless you tonight and it's Stir you up in your spirit. Because we have to really allow the spirit of God to minister to our hearts. That we would have ears to hear what the spirit says to the church. You have to listen and not always be running your mouth. Sometimes we have to be quiet when people are talking to us and listen. I found out that when people are trying to be deceptive, they have a whole lot to say. And when they try to mislead you, connive you, and trick you, they have a whole lot to say. And if you be quiet and listen, God will reveal the intention of their heart and their real motive. He showed the Jezebel spirit in their life. And you don't have to be confrontational. So many times we want to be confrontational and argue with folk to plead our case of who we are and what God has given us to speak. When sometimes God said, you be quiet and listen. Sometimes you don't have to say a word and God will convict them just by your life being in their presence. Amen. So tonight we want to talk about Manifestations of Jezebel. I was going to quit teaching this book. 
But for some reason, the Holy Spirit keep putting it back in my spirit to keep continue to teach it till I get to the end of the book. And if you don't have this book, you need to get this book. It's a very wonderful book to add to your library. You got to get this book. This book will set you free. It will empower you. It will strengthen you. It will stir you up in the faith. You got to get in the word of God and begin to see what God says to speak and allow the Holy Spirit to, to lead you in the way of truth and righteousness. Amen. Glory to God. I'm going to put the book on the screen in just a minute. Give me one second. So if those don't have the book, you'll see what I'm talking about. Give me one second to do this. But I pray that you are being inspired on today. You're being stirred up on, in your faith. In Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit is really ministering to your heart. Because you got to walk in the promise of God's word. You got to. I don't care what you go through in this life. You got to get in that word. Allow that word to get in your spirit. Because once you get that word in your spirit, the spirit of God is going to begin to purge and purify, make you better. Because he knows what we need before we ask anything in his name. And you have to be willing to say, oh God, here I am, speak to me. So this is the book I'm putting on the screen right now. You don't have this book. Get this book. Add it to your library. Because it's going to show you yourself. Ever since I started teaching this book, I've been under attacks after attack after attack. My family under attack. But one thing about it, it's showing me my true character. It's showing me my true loyalty to God, and it's showing in my heart, because it's defining who I really am in Christ Jesus. If you don't get to the place in yourself, you allow the Spirit of God to minister to your heart, you're going to find yourself stuck in a dark place. So you got to get in your word, you got to get these books, different books that God has provided for us to add to our library, because a lot of these things are liberating to your spirit. And you're not going to be able to grow in the knowledge of God's word if you don't gravitate to materials that God has provided for us to teach us. We can't learn everything by ourselves. But God has the power to teach you some wisdom and knowledge from the word, even from other books that you can glean from other authors and other commentators, other pastors, other leaders. Of the gospel of faith. And those things will be things you add to your life to build your spiritual muscles. If you don't desire to grow, you're going to always be a baby. Murmuring, complaining, and always wanting milk. God wants you to desire the sincere milk of the word. He don't want you to get to a place in yourself where you always be sucking on a bottle. It's time to grow up, people. It's time to grow up. Allow the spirit of God to mature you. If you don't allow God to mature you, you'll never grow up in the knowledge and the wisdom of who God is in you. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for joining in this evening. Let's get into our book tonight. It says, now we have looked at what the demonic force of Jezebel does. Remember last week we talked about that, the different things that she does, the mind control, the Manipulation, the deceptions, sickness, diseases, the infliction you with, all different things. If you go back to my YouTube channel, the link is on the bottom of this comment page. You can revisit the lesson from last week. And I pray that it encourages you. Because these lessons are not something I'm just doing just to be doing it. But it's for our spiritual enhancement. God wants us to grow. And we have to be willing to grow. If we're not willing to grow, we're never going to mature in, in our calling. Everybody on this live, everybody in the body of Christ has an anointing on their life. But a lot of people don't know that because they don't take time to spend God, time in God's presence. When you get in God's presence, God begins to define who you really are to Him. And he puts you on an open display before the world to illuminate the glory of God 
that's inside of you to be revealed outside of you to draw others to Christ. The Jezebel spirit is a cunning, manipulative spirit who does not want you to know who you are. She wants to blind your mindset. If she can get your mind in confusion and derision, she can destroy your life. The center core of your heart is upstream. It's connected to the Lord Jesus Christ. He sits on the throne of our hearts. But he cannot have the free right to do anything he chooses in your life if there's resistance and rebellion and stubbornness in your heart. God wants to strip us. I say it all the time. Yield, surrender, release. That means as I yield myself to his will, I surrender to him. That he can have his way in my life to do as he pleases. I release every concern, every care, all that I am into his hands. That he can use me as a vessel of righteousness that would draw men to Christ. Because the word says, Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I would draw all men unto me. You have the drawing power of the Holy Spirit inside of you to draw souls to Christ. They cannot come to Christ if you are not allowing the Spirit of God to infiltrate your structure, to draw. You have to be willing to allow the Spirit of God to use you as a vessel of righteousness to draw others to himself. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Give me one second. I'm in the middle of doing something else. Thank you, Jesus. We glorify you. Glorify you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. To go a little further. In this way, we, we can better identify her when she targets an individual person. Business or ministry. Some wonderful books go into great details about the many different ways this spirit manifests. But I will list the opposition I have encountered personally. So these spirits typically, watch this, will not submit. How many times have you came across an individual in your church who is stubborn, prideful, always causing trouble, always backstabbing and arguing with people and just doing everything the pastor tell them not to do? Because their heart is not in it, they continue to wreak havoc in the body of Christ because they refuse to do what? Submit. Submission is a way where we give up our rights to somebody else to lead God and direct me. And that's what God is looking for. A heart that's submitted. If you can't submit to his lordship and his authority, how can you call yourself a child of God? If you claim to be a minister of God, you claim to be a leader, apostle, a prophet, a teacher, an evangelist, a missionary, and you cannot submit, you're a hypocrite. You're a hypocrite because you're a pretender. Jezebel's name means non-cohabitation. Indicating that she is independent and self-serving and would not cohabitate with anyone, especially any authority. Isn't that something? There's people in our churches all around the country. Might be Baptist, Catholic, Presbyterian, Methodist, Kosher. Word is God only, doesn't matter what your religion is. 
You're going to always find this spirit creeping into the house of God who cannot cohabitate with nobody else. Because they have a selfish motive and a selfish agenda and they're prideful and they're haughty against God. Number two, it's a seductive nature. It's a seductive nature. The spirit seduces others through the tactic of false flattery, control, and manipulation. It also will use sexual seduction if possible. You don't believe that? Look at the story of Samson. How Samson was the strongest man listed in the Bible. But he played with the Jezebel spirit through Delilah. Mm -hmm. The granddaughter of Jezebel. And that spirit. It picked at him and picked at him. Until he became weak enough to tell his secret where his strength came from. She used seduction. To entice him and to break him down. Until he gave up his, his, his uh, secret. Which cost him eventually his life. The enemy used perversion. In the body of Christ. To entice us. To bait us. To lure us away from our purpose. <coughs> Excuse me. So we have to pay attention. And guard your heart for how to flow the issue of life. Proverbs 4 and 8. You got to guard your heart. Because this spirit comes even in your dreams. Yes, it, it comes in many different ways to stop you in your track. But you have to be willing to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And allow the Lord God to draw you into a pathway of righteousness to be discerning of any unclean spirit. They try to come in through the televisions, through the radios, through association, through your jobs, through the shopping centers. Because the spirit is everywhere you go looking for an opportunity to attack you. Let's go a little further. Pits one person against another. Cause dissensions. Especially leaders against leaders and husband against wives. Creates dissensions in relationship. One thing about the Jezebel spirit. It hates union. It hates oneness. It hates togetherness. So it loves to bring division. And if you're not paying attention, that little subtle spirit comes into your heart and calls you to rise against your authority in your church. And once it gets into the place where it starts wreaking confusion, it becomes like a cancer. It spreads throughout the entire body and begins to decay the body from the inside out. We have to be prayed up, be consecrated, pay attention, be on guard, be discerning, be alert, be sober in your spirit. Because the adversary prowls around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Check this out. Infiltrates intercessory prayer ministry. The Spirit specifically targets intercession in order to release witchcraft prayers. I'm going to read that again. The Spirit specifically targets intercession in order to release witchcraft prayers. It tries to gain control so it can direct the prayers. And this is witchcraft. Have you ever heard people praying destruction over somebody else? Or praying sickness over somebody? Or speaking ill about somebody? You're conjuring the spirit of witchcraft. 
Every time you allow your mouth to be lined up with anything negative to speak against another believer in Christ Jesus, you allow yourself to operate in the spirit of witchcraft. And the spirit God is not pleased with, he will destroy it. You got to be careful. But God is not playing with us, church. We have to be careful of the words we're allowed to speak out of our mouth. Because every person will be judged by the words that they speak. And one thing God says, you read this in Matthew chapter 7, I think it's verse 1. So judge not unless you be judged. For the same measure that you meet, it will be measured back to you again. So if I judge you according to your sinful ways and don't judge myself, God said the same punishment I'm speaking against you comes upon me. So we have to be careful. Hooks up with others with emotionalism. You ever been around people who are emotional, who've been through, through a lot of pain and hurt, and all they talk about is the hurt and the pains and the bad stuff that happened to them, the broken relationships, they always sick, things never seem to do good for them, everybody get blessed around them, they never get blessed. They're always murmuring and complaining. And God says we have to be careful because that's a spirit of witchcraft to lure you in. To always complaining and murmuring about things that's not in your power to change. So they become emotional. So they look for a pity party. So they get other people to join in in the emotionalism of sorrow. And then they can identify with the pain because they've been hurt. So everything that happened to them, so now you got a group of people sitting around talking about nothing but pain. And God is saying tonight, you got to allow the Holy Spirit to strip you of yourself, allow the Word of God to be embedded in your heart, to lead you in the truth of His Word, so even pray for the individual who come to you with that mess. You got to pray for them. Don't let yourself be sucked in. Rebuke that unclean spirit and join in in prayer with them to pray against that emotionalism. It's okay to have emotions, but don't allow emotion to dictate to you the outcome of your life. My God, my God. Mm, mm, mm. Manipulates others through false dreams and visions. This is a good one here. Because you got people who would tell you dreams they never had. And they tell you about a vision they saw that wasn't real. It's something they just made up at the moment because you're having a good conversation with other people and they want to fit in the crowd. So they're going to make up stuff to sound good to draw the attention to himself, to manipulate everybody to listen to them. People are so cunning and conniving among themselves because they look for other people to manipulate control, to control the conversation, control the outcome, control the direction. They will control everything about your life. You got people in marriages where one person is stronger than the other and they always control and, and dictate to the person what they can, cannot do. There's no balance in the marriage. There's, they're always putting down the other person. They're always talking about them, belittling them, make them feel inadequate, make them wish they've never been married because they don't really care about them. They're prideful and they're arrogant about themselves. We have to be careful who you connect with. Because somebody you connect with does not have your best interest at heart. 
They use flattery words to entice you. I got people that I've known who got into a marriage that they were not ready for. And they use flattery words to, to entice each other to connect with each other. And then once they get married, also now everything falls apart because it was not ordained by God. God will give you desire your heart. Even if it's not according to his divine will. You hear that? God will give you the desire of your heart even though it's not according to his divine will. Because you want that person so bad, God will give them to you or give her to you. Even though it's not his divine will, he'll let you tolerate each other. Let you get yoked up in a marriage or relationship with a person who don't have no destiny to follow God. So they become unequally yoked. And the word says that a person unequally yoked is an individual who's not connected with God's will. Going a little further. Seeks opportunities to teach. The spirit desires to gain a platform so they will operate in its perverted, illegitimate power and control. Oh, my God, my God, my God. I've seen many pastors throughout the years of my ministry who operate just like he just said here. Set up their platform to teach heresies. And heresies is false doctrine that defies the doctrine of Christ. And they manipulate and control the people to believe every false teaching they enunciate. Because it's perverted by the enemy. And they use their teachings, check this out, to even gain control over married women. And they get the married women to follow them so much till he become their God. And then he can bait them, even though he's married, to have an adult relationship with him. It's sad, it's sad, it's sad, it's sad. It's degrading in the eyes of God. And God gets angry over a perverted heart who continue to manipulate his people. But one thing about it, God says he's going to give you the judgment according to your heart. If you're one of those that's been enticing and manipulating and misleading God's people any kind of way, you need to repent and allow the Spirit of God to cleanse your heart. If you don't walk in truth and God's righteousness, you're on a path of destruction. And God is not playing with us today. He's allowing people to be exposed for who they really are in today's time. The iniquity of heart, the perversion of heart, the sinfulness, the deception, the manipulation, all these things they've been doing throughout the years are now starting to come to the forefront because God is not playing with church. I tell you, better wake up, church. We got to wake up. Pay attention. Go a little further. They twist the scriptures. They make the scriptures fit according to their belief system and according to their life. They're not going to preach the truth. They're going to give you half truth. And we all know a half truth the whole lot. So I can't come to you and tell you that God is love. And that if you don't obey God, God's going to punish you. But I'm going to keep doing my sinful ways and live my life according to my own standards, do what I want to do. So I actually live in a whole lot. So I want to take the word of God. I want to change it around 
to manipulate you to follow me. So even though I'm not real with God in myself, I put on a facade that I'm doing what God wants me to do. And I put on a counterfeit garment of holiness to look pious and upright in the presence of God. And all the time I'm lying and deceiving my own self. The deceiver will be deceived, the word says. And God said, the ditch that I dig for you, I'm going to fall in the same trap myself. My God, my God. If you got your Bibles, go to Revelation chapter 2, verse 20. Go to Revelation chapter 2, verse 20. I'm going to turn it in just a minute. This Jezebel spirit infiltrates prophetic ministry. You know what infiltrate is? It seizes. It takes control of. It overpowers. When an invading army came against the children of Israel, God enabled them to overpower their enemy to defeat them. But when rebellion was in their hearts, God allowed their enemies to infiltrate their structure to overpower them and take control of them and lead them in captivity. Jezebel's spirit overpowers prophetic ministry and falsely prophesies. My God, my God, my God. Jezebel is attracted to prophecy and attempts to prophesy falsely if allowed. Jesus. You got to stand against that spirit. You got to overpower that spirit through the blood of the Lamb, the word of your testimony, stand on the word of God, keep preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, defy all unrighteousness, turn away every unclean spirit, try to enter to your house, by sanctifying your tabernacle, your house is your tabernacle, your heart is your tabernacle, and you got to allow yourself to go through a ceremonial cleansing to purify your mind, your body, your soul, your will, your emotions with the word of God through the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us draw near to God, be washed clean from evil conscience. That's what God wants. And God will begin to purify you and fill you with his spirit mm -hmm. and clean you up Jesus. from the inside out. Jezebel is attracted to false prophecy. She operates through divination and witchcraft rather than through the pure gift of prophecy. You hear that? That spirit is so manipulative she don't want the true prophecy to manifest. So she overpowers it with false prophecies. Jezebel calls herself a prophetess. That is, God does not acknowledge her prophetic giftings. Now go to Revelations. Go to Revelations. Go here myself. Give me one second. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. This is good. I told you it's going to be a good lesson tonight. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. So, let's go to Revelations. Let me, uh, I'm going to show you something here. This is going to be a good one. Because I, I tell you, when you begin to study God's word, God give you revelation, give you insight. He'll show you things you've never seen before by his spirit. So, in Revelations, chapter 2, glory to God. Let's go up a little further. Let me go to chapter, verse, the verse uh, 18. Go to verse 18. 
It says, I am unto the angel of the church of Thyatira. Right. These things says the Son of God, who has his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works. And the last to be more than the first. You hear that? The Son of God is defined. He's defined as one who has flame of fire in his eyes. And the flame can illuminate anything in your life that's not of God. His feet are like fine brass, right? One thing about that, his feet, fine brasses, is something that's shiny. It's, it's, look at this. There are four things against Thyatira. Permitting Jezebel to teach. Permitting her to seduce my servants, Christians to commit to fornication. Permitting her to seduce Christians to eat things, sacrifice to idols. Tolerating her in spite of impenitence. That means a change of heart. Repent of her heart. So it's feet are like fine brass, right? That means he's firm in his judgments. Go to verse 20. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. Because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calls herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication, to eat and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication. And she repented not. You hear this? this? This is good. Now he said, I know the church. Thy time, right? He said, I know your works. I know your giving. That's charity. You're giving. I know your servitude. And he says, I know thy works. And I know your faithfulness and your patience. And the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. So if you read about the seven churches, God, all, he had found something to bring reproof in each church. But listen to this. He said, I gave her space to repent. She will repent. Now here's the judgment. Verse 22. So verse 22 says, Behold, I would cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. Isn't that something? Yes. God is so merciful, so kind-hearted towards us as people, even in our sinful ways. So I still give you the opportunity to repent, to have a change of heart, to turn around, do things right. But he says because the spirit of Jezebel commits adultery. You might say to yourself, I don't commit adultery. I, I never uh, been in another relationship with anybody else who was married. God says, yes, you have. You've been in, in relationship with the enemy through other avenues that cause you to have an adult relationship against him. When you allow yourself to be perverted by your sinful mindset and your heart of the, of the world, the heart of flesh that's filled with iniquity, 
you commit adultery against God. And God said, because of this, I'm allowing her to go into great tribulation. And we all know that in the last time, in the last days, that God is going to cause a great tribulation period to take place in the world. And those who have not followed Christ with the whole heart are going to be left during the tribulation period when the rapture comes. So God said, because of this, she refused to repent. She's going to be left into tribulation. But then he just didn't stop there. Now you talking about her children. Verse 23. He says, I will kill her children with death. Ain't that something? There's a lot of children in the world that's of the spirit of Jezebel. Yes. And that spirit's an unclean spirit that controls every avenue of your life. And God says that same spirit that's in your children going to cause them to die. And he's not talking about little children. He's talking about the children that's supposed to be children of God who abandon their faith to follow Jezebel. And he says, And all the churches should know that I am he which searches the reins and the heart. You know what he's talking about? I know everything about you. Let's go to verse 23. 23 here. Let's look at something here. Reigns. It says the Greek word for reigns is nephros. The kidneys. Or in figurative, the innermost mind. I'm almost done for the night. I'm almost done. We're going to be done in a few more minutes. God bless you, Dion. Sister Dion, God bless you. Thanks for joining in. Amen. So, he says, God is saying that I search the innermost of your mind, your thought life. I know what you are committed to. I know every thought that you're thinking about. I know every agenda you have set in your mind to do. I even know the sinfulness you're going to do. And I search your heart. Because he knows your works. Isn't that something? We have to get to the place. We allow the Spirit of God to bring conviction to our heart to change. Go to verse 24. Verse 24. The depths of Satan. I tell you, this is something. But I say unto you, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, which have not known the depths of Satan, that means the measure of Satan, the influence of Satan, the control of Satan, as they speak, I will put Bert, he said, I will put upon none of, let me read this again. I will put upon you none other burden. In other words, I'm being merciful. Because you don't really understand the magnitude of the influence of Satan that have influenced or have influenced and creeped in the church, right? But that which you have already hold fast till I come. In other words, there's a remnant in the church who stood faithful, who have not abandoned their faith to give up to follow the enemy. So God says, because of I know your heart, I'm going to preserve you until I come back again. See, but that which ye have already hold fast till I come. He said, and he that overcometh and kept it or keep his my works until the end. To him will I give power over the nations. He'll make you ruler. What he's talking about. In the last day, God said, I'm raising up a remnant of people 
who have not abandoned their faith to follow Jesus Christ, I'm going to make you ruler over many. He shall rule them with the rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I receive of my father. And I will give him the morning star. Oh my God, this is so good. He that has an ear, let him hear mm -hmm. what the Spirit says to the churches. So he says, I'm going to give you the position of authority. Mm -hmm. Ruling the nations with a rod of iron. Power over the nations. The morning star. All saints will be kings or priests under the Christ and will rule the earth forever. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This is so good. I hate to quit this. I tell you, I'm on fire right now. This is really blessing my yes. spirit tonight. God is really doing something in our lesson tonight. I pray it's encouraging you. It's enriching you. It's strengthening you, empowering you to keep standing in the faith of Jesus Christ. Yes. Glory to God. Glory yes. to God. Hallelujah. Let me yes. the thing yes. going. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I tell you. So go a little further. We're going to quit a little bit. We're going to quit a little bit. Y'all just bear with me. I got a few more points to bring out before we quit. Okay, the spirit of Jezebel. It twists the scriptures, infiltrates prophetic ministry, and false prophecies, brings with it a spirit of infirmity. Is that something? There are people who spoke witchcraft over somebody else, which incited the spirit of infirmity in them. And they believed what had been spoken over them, so it began to give power to manifest. So we're talking about tonight the manifestation of the, of the spirit of Jezebel. So the same spirit it causes a spiritual infirmity inside of you. When you start feeling sick in your spirit, when you feel like you don't have the power to stand up against anything the enemy brings against you. Therefore, it afflicts you physically. The spirit of infirmity is a sickness you can't shake off easily. And it manifests in your body with a physical sickness. You ever known people who, who are sick all the time? Every time they turn around, they sick. Mm -hmm. They always got pneumonia. They always got the flu. Always got the cold. They got COVID. They, their bodies keep breaking down. Mm -hmm. Because you accept the information from the world that it streams over the media. Mm -hmm. They feed you so much negativity about sickness to your mind receive it. That's why God said you have to deal with the inner mind. He had to, he had to change your thought life. Because if you don't change your thought life and stop agreeing with the spirit of infirmity, you're never walking healing. Mm -hmm. You have to get to the place in yourself where you allow God's word to begin to show you that Jesus Christ paid the price for your healing. The enemy wants us to be sick and broke down and destitute. He don't want us to be well and healthy. He wants to always be complaining and grumbling and mumbling about our bodies being sick. You, you know, I'm going to say this point. When I was growing up as a child, I always had ear infections. And because I always get water in my ear from swimming and different things, and I always got a cold. It's like I, colds are always gravitating me. I always got sick. Every winter, I got sick with a cold. Even in my adult life, it's like every year around the same season, the same cycle, I got sick. So when I went through cancer back in 2016, when I was going through that sickness, the Holy Spirit spoke to me in December when I was lying in the hospital going through a biopsy. I was going for a biopsy to find out what type of cancer I had. 
It was at midnight. The Holy Spirit spoke to me through the voice of God and said, you shall not die, but live and declare the words of God that by his strife you are healed. And the Lord said, get you a book called Health and Healing Scriptures. And I got that book and the Lord told me exactly what's in that book what to read. It was nothing but scriptures concerning healing. And the more I read those scriptures, it broke the cycle of sickness off my mind. Yes. You know what I just said? Off my mind. Because yeah. until, until I get in the mindset, it's not going in the heart. Mm -hmm. So the more I read those scriptures, three, four times a day, I prayed those scriptures. So when I went to the hospital in January to go through chemo, they told me all the side effects and everything going to happen to me. Because the chemo is going to do this to your body, going to break you down, it's going to cause all kinds of destruction in your organs. I said, the devil's a lie. I don't receive it. And everything they said was supposed to happen to me, it didn't happen. Some things happened, the, lo the losing of hair, the weight loss, but a lot of those other symptoms and side effects they said I would experience, I never experienced it. Because I kept reading that word every day to the God in my spirit. And I confessed that word over myself that I am the Lord thy God that healeth thee. That by his stripes I am healed. He sent his word to heal me and deliver me from all destruction. So the more I confess the word, the word manifest. So my pastor came to Big Mars in the hospital in Texas, the church I was attending. He became a bishop during that time, during that time season. And he came to visit me and his wife. And as he was sitting in the chair across from me, and I was sitting on the edge of the bed. It was about my first week of being in the hospital. It's about the fourth day. My hair started falling. I was talking to him with my mustache falling, started falling off. I just started laughing because I, I was talking and hair fell off my face. And so I said to him, I was lying here in the bed before you came. And the Lord spoke these words to me. He says, you're already healed. But your body got to catch you with the healing. And he looked at me and he says, what did you just say? He said, man of God, that is a very profound statement. See, because what you're talking about is faith. The word tells us Hebrews 11 and 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So the Lord spoke in my spirit that I was already healed. But I had to believe it. You hear that? I had to believe it. They could believe for me, but until I get the revelation to believe what God just spoken to me, I would have never got healed. So I went through six months of chemo. And the medication I was on started making me nauseated. I was getting sick. And the more I started getting sick from the medications, I started praying and doing research and what to do to make my body better. And the Lord led me to emergency, started doing greens, salads, stuff that would produce nutrients in the bloodstream that produces healing in your body. I was taking the naked juice, the green juice, I was doing fruits and vegetables, I do a lot of things that produce life. And the more I did that, the Holy Spirit said in my six months, start weaning myself off the medications. I was on about 12 different medications. And I listened to the voice of the Holy Spirit. I started weaning myself off those medications. Now I still go to the doctor and do the lab work and everything they would do. 
everything will come out normal in the blood. Hmm. And I was not taking the medication. And the doctor will always give me a good report every time I came for a lab each month. And I went from June to November doing laughs until I was released from the doctor in November. Mm. And did not take this medication anymore. Because I trusted God in his word, I rebuked the spirit of infirmity. And I stood on the word of God that I am healed in Jesus' name. I am not sick. I'm getting healthy. I'm being stronger. I'm being revived. My mind is renewed by the word of God. And I'm standing firm in the faith. And that's exactly what happened. The manifestation. The things I prayed for came to pass in my life. The Jezebel spirit hinders praise and worship. It brings confusion in the midst of praise and worship to distract the people of God from hearing God's frequency. And he knows once praise and worship is released, it's a weapon against his kingdom. And if he can stop you from praising and worshiping God, he can stop you from walking in your authority and receiving the power from God to overcome him. So he does everything in his power to deter you from surrendering in the midst of praise and worship. Because he knows once you get into that place, even when I went through divorce, I went through divorce twice with the same woman. First time in 2012. And the second time in 2016. Each time, the first time was worse than the second time in my mindset. But really, the, the second time was the worst. Because the stuff I had to go through it broke me down but made me better. The first time made me rebellious and I was stubborn and I was mad at God. You see the difference? Mm -hmm. Because I stayed in the midst of praise and worship until I went to divorce in 2012. But once I got through that divorce episode, I repented I got back into a place of worship and began to praise God for victory. And two years later, we got married again, tried it again. And toward the end, November 2016, she decided to divorce me again. Things were upside down in my life. I was homeless, facing homelessness. All kind of stuff that happened was happening. But during that same process, y'all listen to me very well. Going from January to November, I stayed in the place of praise and worship. I continued to seek the Lord while he was able to be found. I drew near to him, he drew nigh to me. He filled me with such a drive and a power to endure. Even in the midst of a persecution, I kept my mind in peace by surrendering to Jesus Christ. That's how I overcame. I couldn't have did it in my own strength. I couldn't overcome, overcome by myself. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't have worked. But I had to get in that place of a sanctuary. Right. When I got into the sanctuary of God's presence, he changed my mind. I'm going to tell you, I had some wicked thoughts going through my mind. I had some, some rebellion. I wanted to even get retaliation. All kind of stuff was going through my mind. But I had to shut down my mind and get the mind of Christ. Because I stayed in place, praise and worship. It built me up during the pressure to handle the storm. And I came through the toilets. My last point, we're going to stop right here. The spirit of Jezebel, the last manifestation, causes financial lack. Once you be broke, destitute. Jezebel attacks any finances that she cannot control. 
Have you ever been in a place where it's like the more money you make, the it's like you just just keep going out and finances are always coming empty. Your bank account on the negative. You ain't got raised in your job, yet you're still broke. Poor management. The answer is poor management because you didn't trust God for wisdom to govern your finances. I'm gonna tell you. I lived, I said it before, I lived on $50 a month. And I still managed to save some money after $50. Gave it to the church and tied off that $50. Faithfully. And not one day lacked anything. Because I kept trusting in God, Jehovah Jireh, who is my provider, who always provided what I needed. If a person who is influenced by the demonic power of Jezebel, for example, disagrees with the church finances or the way their governor finances are allotted, the spirit exercises controlling prayers and attitudes concerning the situation. The enemy would do everything in his power to speak against the church finances and would affect your finances. Because anytime you put your mouth on the man of God and the establishment God's given him, his vision and the plan God given him to fulfill for that church, you speak against it, you judge yourself and condemn yourself. And God said, when he said to our Amos, it was a prophet named Amos, he said, tell the children of Israel, why are, have you built up your houses and my house is empty. He said, for this reason, you gain so much, but you end with little. He said, because I breathe on it. And then he said, it's like having pockets with holes in it. Because you didn't do what I want to do to glorify me and please me. I brought a curse on your finances. So if you're living under a curse tonight, you can break that curse by submission. And start praying over your finances, praying over your church, praying over the church finances, praying over your leaders in your church, praying that God's will be done in everything that he does. God will cause the spirit of prosperity to fall upon your finances. I told my son this a long time ago. It's a little simple practice you can do. You want to save some money? Open a bank account somewhere else. Not test it one into money going into. Take at least 10%. Give to God. Give yourself a 10%. Or even more into your other account. And don't touch it. Before you know it, you will see increase on all your substance because your faithfulness to give God what he wants, the first fruits of all your increase. Mm -hmm. Let's go a little further. We'll quit right here. Anytime Jezebel does not get her way, especially in finances, the spirit manifests. Once the spirit is dealt with, the finances increase. Once the spirit has been identified and rebuked out of your finances, out of your house, out of your heart, out of your life, not just your finances increase, your health increase, your mind increase, yes. your spirit increase. Everything attached to you increases. Your children increase. Your marriage increases. Your church increase because of the spirit. People don't like this word. The spirit of obedience. There's a spirit of obedience that needs to be in your heart. And God promises if you love the Lord your God with your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength, he will bless everything you have. 
So you'll be blessed coming in and blessed going out. Everything you touch will be blessed because of divine favor of God upon your life. So I encourage you tonight with these words. Allow the Holy Spirit to bring discipline to you. To bring you to a place of surrenderance. When you yield to the will of God. That he will be glorified in your life. Amen. So we're going to close right here with this last point. If you don't have that book, get that book. You find it on Amazon. Amazon or ChristianBooks.com. You can find that book on ChristianBooks.com as well as Amazon. Sometimes the book be on Amazon for $10. Sometimes it be $15. So you got to just check around. I always check around to see how much the book really is. And I find the best price and I purchase the book. However, if you don't have that book, you would like to get a book, inbox me on Facebook. If you have my phone number, text me. And send me a message letting me know you want to get this book. And I will order some more books. Depends on the price of the book that I pay for. I'll let you know before I buy it how much they are. And then you can inbox me uh, through Cash Shop. You can do Zelle to me to pay for the book. You can even send a, a payment to our church, Cash Shop, which is RFF Church, which stands for Redeemed Faith. Fellowship Church. Amen. You can also go on to Give the Five. If you don't have that app, you can download Give the Five. There's another app that you can, you can sow into our ministry for the book. Give the Five. You'll see Redeemed Faith Fellowship Church Milwaukee on there. Amen. So I encourage you tonight. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead God and direct you in His truth and His righteousness. You might be on here tonight, don't know Jesus, your Lord and Savior. As I do each week, I invite you to get to know him. The word says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him should not perish, but shall have everlasting life. You can receive this new life by confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart that Jesus died, was buried, and rose again from the grave, and you become your Lord and Savior. So I want you to pray this simple prayer with me, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. I ask you, Lord, to come into my heart. Forgive me for my sins, knowing and unknowing, and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. And I thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. You prayed that prayer tonight. You just got restored. You got revived. You got born again through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Anyone got any questions or comments? Any questions or comments tonight? God bless you, Sister Dion, for joining in tonight. Good to see you. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. This is good. Good lesson tonight. Amen. I want to pray for you again. Those of you who are sick in your bodies tonight, might be going through a storm. I want to believe God for the power of the Holy Spirit to bring you through to lead you in His victory. That from this day forth, you walk in your purpose for purpose. You are created with purpose, on purpose, for purpose. It's up to you to walk in that purpose. Divine will of God. As I said before, by yielding, surrendering, and releasing yourself into the hand of God, that he'll control your entire destiny in your life. Amen? So, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you for your presence. And I miss, oh God, tonight. I thank you for this lesson, Lord God. They have not fallen for deaf ears. Yes. But bring conviction to all of our hearts, oh God, to change, to become better. As, oh God, those who might be dealing with spirits of infirmity in their body, who are sick, oh God, any type of form, who dealing with seizures, dealing with arthritis, 
Father God, dealing with cancer, leukemia, diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, God, in that body, Father, joint pains, back pains, neck pains, oh God. Doesn't matter what the infirmity is. We come against that spirit right now, God, and release the power of the blood of the Lamb to resonate in their bloodstream. To cause a repairing in their bodies, in their muscles, in their ligaments, in their mindset, their neural system, God. To cause a healing to manifest by your power. I believe, oh God, that everything that God is dealing with COVID, Father God, dealing with colds and flus, oh God, right now. Even babies are fighting for their life, oh God, in the hospital. Father God, we come against that spirit, God, of death. They shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Have your God right way, O God, right now in Jesus' name. Help our unbelief, O God. When we fail to trust you at your word, we fail to walk in obedience. We were even backsliders at one time, O God. We're stubborn, O God. Forgive us, God. And help us to have a desire to do better and follow you in your truth and your word, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen. God bless you. God bless you all. Thank everyone for tuning in tonight. You all stay encouraged. You stay excited about Jesus. God loves you. He loves you, sis. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Talking to DR. Talking to DR. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. But I tell you, God is so good, y'all. Y'all be blessed, excited. I don't know why my mic is not working here. Amen. Okay. But y'all stay excited about Jesus. Invite others to come on next week, Tuesday at 6 o'clock. We're going to continue the rest of this lesson. But I tell you, it's enriching to grow in the knowledge of God's word. The more you learn, the more you grow. The less you learn, the more immature you become. The word tells us, he who is unskillful in the word of God is like a baby designed to send some muck of the word and have need to be taught by others. So I would encourage you, the more you allow the word of God to get in your spirit, you're building your spiritual muscles. To stand against the wiles of the devil. Because he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. But it's up to you to stand on the word of truth every day of your life. Feed your spirit. And allow the Holy Ghost to empower you. Keep standing on the word of truth. Amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May the Lord give you peace. Until we meet again, shalom, God's blessings, his favor, his promises be upon you and richly forever. Y'all have a great night in the name of the Lord. Have a good night, my sis. Amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a good night, everybody. Amen.